Hello and welcome to the Gamer Man's Lounge. Hopefully things are going well for you guys, as for me. Welcome to the lounge. I am Lord Gamer Man of this lounge in commentary mode, coming at you with a news video. And how my news videos work is that I go through the news of weeks past leading up to now, and these news videos end up happening on the lounge monthly. Welcome, Welcome. The, the Gamer, Gamer Man's, Man's Lounge. Lounge. Awaken, Awaken to play. Enough beating around the bush, let's get on with it to our first news story. Blaze Entertainment, following their announcement of the Evercade Alpha arcade cabinet slash console that they got coming out around November. Oh, by the way, that's gonna play a role in a little bit. They revealed for the Evercade lineup a Toa Plan Arcade Collection 3 cartridge revealed on their website following announcements made on official social media posts. Seven games are included, six of them being shoot 'em ups and one action title. The price will be 20 bucks, and this Arcade Collection 3 will be releasing on November 28, 2024, with pre orders coming on September 26. Now, in the games list, we have Botsugun, Botsugun Special, Outzone, Fixate, Truxton 2, Vimana, and Gox, or Gox, however you pronounce that. Gamers in the Evercade ecosystem will be getting more Toa Plan titles in a cartridge. Great thing that's happening, absolutely. Anyway, oh wait, the Evercade lineup is going to be seeing another arcade collection, and it's going to be a Data East Arcade Collection 2 cartridge revealed on the website and following announcements made on official social media posts. Twelve games are going to be included in this cartridge. Three platformers, three shoot-em-ups, two beat-em-ups, three action titles, and one shooter. The price will be 20 bucks, releasing at the same time as the Toa Plan Arcade Collection 3, November 28th, with pre-orders on September 26th. Now, what's in the list of games? Peter Pepper's Ice Cream Factory. This is definitely a spin-off or a sequel to Burger Time. B-Wings, Shootout, Last Mission, Express Raider, SRD, Super Real Darwin, Midnight Resistance, Crude Buster, Trio the Punch, Never Forget Me, Weird Title, Super Burger Time, Edward Randy, Joe and Mac Returns. Once again, the reason why we're seeing these two extra arcade collection cartridges start to show up around November is that it's happening at the same time the Evercade Alpha arcade cab consoles start coming out. And to be honest with you, I want to grab not one, but the both of them. I really, I really am tempted to do that, but I really need to find the space. I really need to find a place in my room where I could go ahead and fit the arcade cabs. That's the thing that I have to start thinking about, and that's... That's, uh... Yeah. This isn't the only dilemma I had in mind. Remember that ITX case from Deep Cool? Looks like I'm not going to be able to build in it, unfortunately. This is because of the sanctions put on Deep Cool by the United States. That's right, Deep Cool has received U.S. sanctions, meaning that products can no longer be sold in the U.S. This is due to legal related situations following the sanction. And they were sanctioned for supplying a million dollars worth of high priority items with two controversial companies. Uh, I'm not going to get into detail, leave that up to you, source links in the description. But Deep Cool products have been getting purged from Amazon, Newegg, and Micro Center as investigated. This is following the sanction. Now, Deep Cool is a PC parts company known for their CPU coolers, fans, and PC cases. As a matter of fact, Deep Cool is a very well-known brand amongst the PC gaming space, especially when it comes to PC building. As a matter of fact, I wanted to build my RTX 3070 rig on a Deepcool ATX case, but unfortunately it was availability that became a pain in the butt and I wasn't able to do so, so I got the MSI case instead. 
And I wanted to build in a CH-160, which is an ITX case. And it was really great because it had a handle that I could just easily just carry. And this would be perfect for my on-the-go ITX rig that would come with a 4060 Ti 16GB. But guess what? That's not happening thanks to the sanctions. So here comes another dilemma. Yeah, it sucks. Anyway, here's a video game recommendation. The Lounge recommends you check out Dead or Alive Ultimate for Xbox Classic. Not only do you get a remastered Saturn port of the first game, but you get Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate. And Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate gives you hugely overhauled graphics and improved models and additional content. For example, you get more outfits including swimsuits for the female cast. Also, you get Hitomi as an unlockable playable character for those who own Dead or Alive 3. And speaking of, if you unlock all the outfits, you get a booster pack to unlock all the outfits in Dead or Alive 3. Crazy. As a matter of fact, this is the ultimate version of Dead or Alive 2, everyone's favorite fighting game sequel in the franchise. So check out Dead or Alive Ultimate and check out Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate. On to the next news story, we have Steam introducing their own game recording software. It's going to be called Steam Record. Uh, quality burp, but no, seriously, Steam Record will have background and manual recording modes. Steam will have something that will prevent background records from exceeding duration and storage. And of course, you can view your captures on Steam Overlay. There is a clipping feature for gameplay footage, and you can share to your Steam friends or community. There will be event markers for the timeline that will add event markers either automatically or manually to signal when things happen. Footage can be exported to MP4. It is going to be Steam Deck verified, and it will work with any game as long as the Steam overlay can run in that game. And keep in mind, Steam Record is in beta phase. And let's get right on going to Gotcha Game News, where we have Genshin Impact 4.8, which is going to be getting a time-limited event map, and events such as an Imaginarium Theater Permanent Edition, a Finchball minigame, photo mode missions, and a combat arena of some sorts. Now, clarification of details for the new character Emily was very scarce due to the lacking indicators determining the rarity of the character when it came to the previews and when it came to the character breakdowns for some reason, but there's a new character, Emily. She's a five-star Dendro Polearm. Now there will be a character story quest for Emily. Now, additional outfits for Nilu and Kirara. If you have Nilu or Kirara, or both, or both, I was going to say Nilu and Kirara, but I'm pretty sure everybody should have, well, not everybody should have Nilu. That's the thing. Well, that's the thing when it comes to the, yeah, you know, I don't know what's going on with Hoyaverse and their shenanigans with the restrictive play styles on the characters, but hey, it is what it is. But anyway, we have the Phase 1 5 star being Navia and, oh, wait a minute. Oh, there's another. Nihilu. That's right. Navia and Nihilu for Phase 1. Phase 2 will have Emily and Yelan. And there will be an update to Genius Invocation TCG. There will be some system optimization and quality of life improvements. And there is a collab with Genshin and the Sea Aquarium. But, however, this special program ended with a teaser for the Natlin region and Natlin region's characters. Speaking of Natlin, I hope that lady with the bunny ear ribbons, I hope she's a five-star character. She better be a five-star character, because if she's a four-star character, I'm not going to be happy. And if she's a four-star character being put in a banner for characters that I don't want, I'm not going to be very happy more than I'm already not going to be happy if she is a four-star. 
And our last news story for the news video is going to be involving Evercade, and this time it's going to be involving delays. That's right. There's going to be some delays when it comes to Evercade hardware and software. And Evercade delays includes highly anticipated hardware and software releasing in July 2024. And unfortunately, that means the Evercade, VSR, and EXPR revision consoles have been delayed. So is the Tomb Raider Collection 1 and Thalamus Collection 1 cartridges. That's right, this is due to an unexpected situation involving production and shipping. Now, the listed products will be pushed back to August 30th, 2024. That is the now release date, so yeah, it is what it is. Looks like Shenanigans is uh, headed towards Blaze Entertainment's way. Let's hope things get better in terms of the Evercade Alpha Arcade Cab consoles coming out in November. And hopefully we won't have to deal with any shenanigans, especially when it came to the robbery of Evercade EXP handheld units back in 2022, when these handhelds were supposed to be basically shipped out. But then all of a sudden, there was that robbery and there was stolen Evercade EXP units... That was messed up. Absolutely messed up. Okay, source links in the description. And with that totally said, that's going to be it for today's news video. That is all, and I will be looking forward to you in the next video. Peace out.